everyone, this is Bryn, and you are listening to an audio version of the Ultimate Bridal Blog presented by Columbia City Bridal. The flowers on your wedding day help complete your theme and vibe. This is Episode 5, The Flowers. venue picked out, it makes it easier to move on to other vendors. The next few posts will be on those, but you can book these in any order you want. However, just like the wedding venue, people book up quickly, so you will want to get a move on it, especially if it is at the top of your priority list. So let's talk about flowers! Those beautiful, expensive little guys. No need to fret though, you have a lot of choices to fit your budget. The first thing you will want to do is Google pictures of floral arrangements of your wedding theme or vibe. This may give you some alternative ideas to flowers if that is something you are interested in instead. Hello, greenery! But regardless of what speaks to you, there is one thing in common. You will need to purchase materials from somewhere and the flowers need to match your wedding colors and your aesthetic. So here are some choices you have. Artificial flowers. They can be sprinkled in with real flowers, and you won't be able to tell much of a difference, if any. By itself, they can look cheap and noticeably fake unless they are high quality. You can find high quality artificial flowers on a site like Etsy, and they are beautiful in person. And artificial flowers can be one of the cheapest routes to take. The next one are dried flowers. They are ultra long lasting, they are beautiful, and you can also find them on Etsy. More bang for your buck, they last longer than fresh flowers, so even though they can be a bit pricey still, you have them for longer. They have more versatility, you can do so much more with them once they are done being used for your wedding. Your next choice are real flowers. They are beautiful. They can be expensive. If you want a particular flower that is not in season, expect the price to increase. You have more choices. They smell good. Preservation options, or you can give them away when finished with them. When it comes to finding a florist, find someone who has good reviews and looks like they fit your wedding theme slash vibe. Here are some questions you can ask. One, where do you get the flowers from? For example, my florist gets hers from a flower farm. How cute is that? Two, what do you provide? Vases, candles, etc. Three, what are all the arrangements you make? Bouquets, table centerpieces, arch flowers, etc. Four, what would the day of delivery look like? Five, who sets up the arrangements at the ceremony and reception space? Six, if needed, do I return things to you or do you pick them up? How soon after the wedding day do they need returned? Seven, what do payments look like? The nice thing about hiring a florist is you get to sit back and let them create the magic for your wedding day all while just giving your opinion. And they likely have many years of experience under their belt so they can give you ideas and know pretty quickly which direction to take. Of course, if you are a DIY bride and want to make your own arrangements, go for it. You can decide what you want to work with and save money this way too. Just be mindful of the amount materials cost and the amount of time you would need to work on them. Also, as noted above, you can already find premium arrangements on sites like Etsy. Just FYI. Whoever will pin boutonnieres should really go online and read a post or watch a video to learn how. Corsages can be either on the wrist or pinned. A lot of florists now actually nix the pin and make it a magnet so there is no hole in the dress or shirt. You will want to find out what your florist does. What you may need flowers for. Ceremony decor, reception decor, centerpieces, tables for gifts, guest book, etc., your wedding cake, 
bouquets for bride and bridesmaids, flower girl petals, corsage for moms, grandmothers, any woman speaker, officiant, boutonnieres for the groom, groomsmen, dads, grandfathers, speakers, officiants, ushers, ring bearer. Make a plan. What will you do with your flowers during the reception? Will you have a vase on the table? What will your bridesmaids do with their flowers during the reception? Vases on table? Put someone in charge of the arrangements and anything that needs returned for after the wedding. If you are giving away arrangements after the wedding, make a list of who gets what and have your person in charge handle it. Consider this. Tall and short centerpiece arrangements to create a beautiful reception space. Tall centerpieces give the room some needed height when looking at the big picture. The tall centerpieces should have a thin vase or stand so your guests can easily see around or through it when talking to others across from them. When you are seated, the top of your tall centerpieces should be taller than your eye level. Try having a couple of different looking smaller arrangements. So essentially, you have at least three different centerpieces. The tall centerpieces are the same, and the two smaller arrangements are different from each other. Try reusing ceremony decor at the reception space, whether it is on a table, by your bridal table, or right by the doors when guests walk into the room for cocktails and hors d'oeuvres. Think about any accessory you may want with your bouquet. Some brides have a special memory charm. Use cloth from a relative's wedding dress, there's something blue, etc. Overall, your flowers should match your color scheme and aesthetic. Whichever direction you decide to take, whether it is artificial, dried, real flowers, or a mixture, just do what makes you and your budget happy.